DCA jump scare! Oh my golly, oh my gosh. Welcome back to CCA! <laughs> I am Grace Ooh. and I'm joined here tonight uh, by Cygnus. Cygnus, say hi. Cygnus says hi. No way. How's it going, everyone? <laughs> <laughs> um, tonight, uh, we are going to be seeing a Division 5 match here, which is going to be Undertow Dartfish versus Crimson Inc. Cygnus, tell me a little bit about these two teams. Yeah, these two two teams have been competing in, in Division Five here in the CCA. Both having a decent amount of experience. I'm seeing that Undertow Dartfish has participated in a couple low inks, and and Ludi Season Thirteen has been a staging ground for Crimson Ink along with F Ludi Four. For, and they both have prior CCA experience as well, as well with Crimson Ink, Ink is taking on a positive record in, in Division Four back in CCA yeah, League Season Two. And Undertow Darkfish Fish Fish competed in Division Six just 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 last semester in CCA League Three. They received. Their keys to victory are here. Crimson Dorfish starting off two and zero here. Here, here having one rescheduled game, but otherwise sweeping both of their games. Their keys to victory are, are, are their main keys, keys to victory are their callouts, especially their location callouts. They, 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 they're like pushing together and they treat their practices seriously. Undertow Dorfish also another undefeated team, going four and zero in two games with a four one win over Let's Get Kraken in week two as well. They're they're. Keys to victory. They research their opponents and tailor their comps specifically to go against their enemies. They have. They also have a pretty large team with with some wide weapon specialties, and they practice frequency and put a lot of prep time in each match. Yeah, I mean, I think prep time is really important to kind of winning your matches, kind of seeing what your opponents are going to do. I uh, greatly. Oh, <laughs> CCA jump scare. <laughs> It strikes again. <laughs> strikes again. Uh, we're going to be heading right into the match here, Cygnus. Um, and the comps so far are looking pretty interesting. We do see a Wiper and um, I believe that was a Flingza. Oh my golly goodness. On the side of Undertow Dartfish. Um, but we do see a Sploosh. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say a Neo sploosh matic very, That's very surprising to see. Listen, I am I am here for it, Cygnus. I am always here for funny picks here. We see the, the Splattershot Huffle trying to get a pick here, but Crimson Ink is going to go two down in this opening. Uh, we see this uh, Flingza kind of push up here with that end zap. The Wiper is going to swing around to the side, but the end zap is going to go Ooh. down, but that stamp is going to come out to try and create some pressure. Yeah, but it unfortunately falls victim to a, a, a far too common <laughs> an ultra stamp moment of getting killed from the front. Here, yes, as we see indeed. Crimson Ink taking the lead now, now having that Kraken moving out, protecting its teammates. Yeah, and I mean, I think coordinating with that Kraken is going to be so crucial to Crimson Ink's success here. We see that Zuka getting a pick, which is going to be amazing in securing that yeah. first checkpoint for Crimson Ink. The cooler is going to pop as well onto that tower. The heavy deco is going, putting in some great work, getting some paint down, and trying to push the front lines, doing another Kraken. Yeah. The second one that we've yeah. seen them do here, Cygnus. <laughs> That Kraken just getting behind enemy lines, just causing all, all sorts of chaos. If you have to focus on a Kraken, that's that much more time when you're not when you're not able to, to push on your objective because you have to run away from the from the giant death squid just coming right at you. Yes, I I do start screaming when the Kraken starts yeah. charging me. <laughs> <laughs> me. Me as well. I definitely do yes. too. <laughs> But it is nice to see Undertow Dartfish did not scream too much. Maybe we do not do that. We do not see their VCs, but they seem to be holding themselves pretty well, given that they did push down and get that first checkpoint down stat. There's going to be three a uh, three down situation for Crimson Ink here, and the last member is going to jump out that that was a Sploosh Sploosh Man here, who is yeah. not the one on the Sploosh, <laughs> is going to create some pressure here on the Wiper and stamping and comboing with that Inkjet from their teammate. Yep. Unfortunately, though, that Ultra Stamp. For the second time, this game going down to the front as Undertow Dorfish continues to pressle to, to pressure <laughs> with their tender missiles as we see Crimson Ink trying to regain map control. Control here. They had a, a very strong first push, push, followed by Undertow Dorfish regrouping well and making a strong counter push, taking control of, of mid. Both teams teams are down to three players here. However, Crimson Ink does have two specials going. 
as we see that Trizuka coming out and wreaking havoc. Yeah, I mean, Huffle here is really, really good at popping those Zookas at opportune moments for their team. We do see a member of Undertow Dartfish is going to go down here to that menacing Kraken again here from yeah. Crimson Inc. Their push is just going to keep on going here, and they've threatened to take this next checkpoint. Yeah, there was a very strong two-on-one with the Splatter Shop running support for the Kraken to be able to do its thing without getting pushed away too much as... The, the, the Ultra Stiff for Undertow Dartfish going down again as Crimson Ink takes game one in, in, in solid fashion. Yeah, I mean, Cygnus, they did a really good job there. I think pushing up a lot of their specials were super coordinated, and they were really good at letting Undertow Dartfish kind of take space, but being very good at kind of having rebuttals of their own when they did give them a little bit of wiggle room. We saw a lot of Krakens pop, which I am a fan of, but also not a fan of because I think that they're scary. Um, but yeah. this lovely, lovely replay here, I think, is going to catch maybe a kill here with the Kraken. Nope, but we do see the Kraken start. <laughs> yeah, the Kraken and the Splash Shout working together, forcing those two on ones supporting supporting each other. Just like I mentioned, I don't know, that coordination of taking T by getting that numbers advantage is so important. Where like, where a phrase I love when it comes to Splatoon it is. Good players win one on one. Great players find the opportunity to take two B ones and win those. And that's Very what Crimson. Cool. That's what I saw a lot of from Crimson Inc. here. Yeah, I think um, a lot of that might come from their history together. I mean, they've played quite a bit. I mean, I think we're we're like in Ludi season. 14 now, but they did play Ludi season 13 together, so they're quite veterans, honestly. They also appeared in CCA League, um, <clears throat> excuse me, season 2 when they were Div 4 and went 3 2 in group. So, listen, Cygnus, they've been playing together for a long time, so they must be really great at coordinating, which I mean, we saw this game. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and co coordination, I feel, is the most important aspect doing well at as a team playing Splatoon competitively. I mean, you, you have all the skill in the world, but if you can't coordinate with your teammates, you're just four solo queue players going going in on your own without backup against uh, against groups of opponents. You need that coordination if you want to do if you want to do well. And Crimson and Crimson Inc has been has been showing been showing that paying off a lot in game one. And now here now here in game two, we're going over to Rainmaker Inkla Art Academy and seeing if if Undertow Darkfish can. Can adjust after that first game. Mm -hmm. I think that'll really be a true test of how strong Undertow Dartfish has become uh, throughout this league season so far, Cygnus. Being able to adjust to your opponent, see what they're doing well, and kind of internalizing that and saying, okay, but what do we do? What can we do against them? That's really the key uh, to finding your footing in a match like this. Exactly, yeah. And as and as was pointed out in the keys to victory earlier, Undertow Darkfish does have a lot of versatility. They have a, a lot of players on their roster going seven deep, deep with quite a diverse weapon pool. So you can never know what to expect when going against this team. Yeah, that's that's very true. I think. Um... The more weapons that you kind of have under your belt, it makes you quite the, drac the jack of all trades. And then you're up against your opponent and they're trying to like study you and see what they're, you're going to pull out. But they don't really know what you're going to pull out because one second you're going to be using like a try and the next second you're going to be using the try stringer. So who yeah. knows? Exactly. Or even that or even that Splushomatic we saw come out game one. Mm-hmm. I think that's such an interesting pick, but usually when people go sploosh, they know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Because it's such, it's, I can be kind of tough to work around, especially because although you do paint very well, there's just other weapons that people would consider better to use. You know, I'm a junior player myself, and a question I get mm -hmm, asked yeah. a lot is, well, but can you use Zap? No, I will not use Zap. <laughs> <laughs> so I get it. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you have you have your pick. It's off the beaten track, but 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 you know you are better with that weapon than anything else, regardless of how like conventional wisdom considers it viable or not. Mm-hmm. 
And Arvin here is going to stick on that Neo Sploosh. This is their Hail Mary pick here, Cygnus, and I'm here mm. for it. We're going to see some more conventional picks on the side of Undertow Dartfish, seeing that Neo Splash Omatic, that Ballpoint, Tri Nouveau, and Wiper. The Tri Nouveau on the side of Crimson Ink is going to go down here in this opening. And the Wiper as well on the side of Undertow Dartfish, so it's going to be an, an even fight for mid right yeah. off the bat. Yeah, and you have those triple link strikes already coming out, but Crimson Ink does manage to grab the Rainmaker after their pop and taking a, a quick checkpoint one, even though they go down to the wiper on that. Uh, on that, they still hit that checkpoint and they get the pop again, building off that three down from Undertow Dartfish. They're making a very aggressive play. The Kraken versus the Ultra Stamp in the Battle of the Up Close Titans. It is quite the battle indeed. We see William here on that Neo Splash trying to get in and get a pick on Kyo on that uh, Rainmaker, but they are not unsuccessful. We see the other Tri Nouveau trying to sneak up behind them. They're trying to make a pinch star happen, and they are successful. This Inkjet from Kitsune is going to come out and flush out uh, that Splatling Deco. Yeah, smart jump boy by the Splatling Deco, uh, especially given how close the special is. You just want to stay alive, get that special, save that Kraken for a time when you can really use it well here. As you see Wolf fighting for his life here. Uh, but here. They're getting a trade in mid against Arbin there. Oh, the second one goes down. So here's Huffle mo moving in, getting the pick off on William. Two down from Undertow Darkfish as, uh, as Crimson Ink takes the Rainmaker once again and heading to the main choke point of this match. This is Crimson Ink's chance to score some more points. Their Neo Splush is going to go down, but the members of Crimson Ink are surrounding this Rainmaker, trying to keep them safe, trying to get them away from those inkjet shots from Kitsune. Unfortunately, one of the members is going to go down, and the uh, Rainmaker here is kind of sitting by this tree area, trying to get away from the members of Undertow Dartfish, but their teammates clean them up uh, here. So yep. it's going to look like they're going to be able to score some points. Yeah, nice move by Quo go going through that ink rip. Real. This part of the map is the is the biggest struggle on Rainmaker. You just have to get past the choke point at that ramp in order to in order to pick up any steam with your pushes. But Crimson Ink was able to do that here, pushing it all the way up to five. They are two down, but so is their opponents in Undertow Darkfish. They are just keeping up this pressure on their opponents as the wipe uh, as the wiper is desperately trying to ink to delay this pop. As we see as we see Crimson Ink re regrouping back on the plat before making their play. Yeah, I mean, we see the Splatling again holding a really strong position on the opponent's plat here. But two members are going to flank around Undertow Dartfish, mm. getting a two down situation, trading out in the end. But Undertow Dartfish does not have the Rainmaker in their possession. They have to get this pop here, and they're at a quite a dis disadvantage having to push up uh, all the way to five remaining to get the lead. Yes, yeah, definitely an uphill battle to climb, but nothing's over until it's over. Although here we see uh, Undertow to Dartfish Look like they're starting to get a good push together. Unfortunately, going three down, going three down there, and their last member having ha having to jump out to save their special points. Mm -hmm. I think that was a really smart jump out. I mean, you really are going to have to uh, pop out your hammer at an opportune moment to stop their push. Crimson Ink is really doing a great job here at pushing in aggressively with those Krakens, with those other specials. The hammer is going to come out. Sploosh Man here on the Wiper is going to get the Rainmaker, just kind of get them and then run back into their teammates, which is a great play. It is now a three down situation for Crimson Ink here, only that Splatling remains uh, sitting there trying to defend that pedestal as Undertow Dartfish has a promising push. Yeah. Blue Shamanic almost got off a successful flank there, but the Wiper was able to catch them in the end. The Rainmaker is pelting that pe pelting being that pedestal as, they're, as Undertow Dartfish making a desperate run for that checkpoint, and they got it even though they go, but, but, but it's a three down versus two down. Very few players remaining up, but Crimson Ink does get the pop here as we're in the final minute of this game. That Sploosh is going to go down again, unfortunately, on the side of Crimson Ink, trying to defend their Rainmaker there. But three, make that a wipe for Undertow Dartfish here. It looks like Crimson Ink is going to try to get some more points going up into that um, that ramp, trying to push up a little bit here. We see the Kraken come out again from this Splatling. It must have, this must be like their 80th crack in this game, Cygnus. I mean, they're just really good at getting it. Yeah, they're definitely... Showing one of the, the, they're definitely showing how to get good use out of one of the lesser seen backline picks in this game with the heavy splatling deco. But but between point sensor and heavy splatling always being a, a, a good option and showing how you can get 
uh, uh, aggressive, even with a weapon that's typically that's typically content to just hang in the back. Using that crack and getting in there, and then using the, those partial charges to fend enemies off as, as you back up and create more and create more space. The heavy spotling, the heavy spotling deco has been putting in a lot of good work for Crimson Inks so far in this set as they take a two games to none lead. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see in this replay here, the members of Crimson Ink with no paint in front of them are just ready to push up. And I think that uh, sets them apart from Undertow Dartfish in this set so far. And that's something that Undertow Dartfish um, has to kind of understand as a team and maybe learn from, honestly. I think the ability to just see an opportunity, especially on a fast-paced mode like Rainmaker, and to just go for it and just know that your teammates have your back and that y'all can make a push happen is really, really crucial. You can't sit in mid and wait for it to happen. You kind of have to make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. And especially when Crimson grabbed the Rainmaker in that final minute there, they're, they're, they could have easily chosen to just hold back try to stall the Rainmaker out, just keep it away from the enemy team, but, but instead they trusted in themselves and their teammates' abilities, and, and they went in. They got aggressive once again, just keeping the Rainmaker in enemy territory, deciding it's okay if, if the enemy gets it. I'll be so far in their territory, and we'll just be so in their face that they won't be able to do anything with it regardless. Yeah, I think... Uh, offense is the best defense a lot of the time, and I think Crimson Inc. is taking that kind of mantra to heart, especially here at yeah. Um I think on Rainmaker especially, it's really, really good to just keep the pushes rolling. Even if it puts you at a disadvantage, getting that Rainmaker further to their pedestal, keeping on that pressure, um, it really helps in psyching out your opponents and physically making uh, it harder for them to push back the objective. Yes, absolutely. And speaking of being able to, to maintain aggression, here we're going to Columbus on Museum del Fantino, a map where, from my experience at least, it's very easy to maintain your aggression, uh, taking control of that enemy platform, cycling super jumps and just maintaining pressure there. We'll see if Crimson Inc. is able to keep that going or if Undertow Darkfish can find, the, find a way to bounce back here. Yeah, I think... Uh... Clamblitz on Museum D'Alfonso. I think it's it's a very interesting one. I think it caters yeah. well to the crack and cheese method, which we all know too well. Yeah, definitely, especially with the two methods eventually being being the main way up the ramp to, to the side, but but also with the addition of the of the of that block near, near the enemy basket, just allowing you to to quickly jump it to to quickly jump it jump in more aggressively. Yeah, I think um, I think we're definitely going to see some sort of crack and cheese happening here. I would be surprised if we didn't sing this, because we do know that yeah. a member um, of both teams are capable of bringing out a crack and weapon here. I mean, I think it would be very fun if we saw somebody successfully pull off <laughs> a crack and cheese here. Especially, again, with the heavy spotling deco, I mean... As a backline player myself, seeing a back, uh, see, being able to see a backline pull up the uh, aggressive crack and cheese would be a lot of fun. I, 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 I'm definitely anticipating seeing some of these shenanigans. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think Clamblitz in specific is a very team-oriented um, mode. I feel like a lot of the other ones that could be said about as well, like Tower Control, you know, Rainmaker, you really have to work together to push that objective. But Clams really can be your undoing if you're not working together as a team. So this is really the test to see which uh, team here is going to be able to build a power clam, communicate the most efficiently. I couldn't agree more, Grace. Grace, coordination is definitely the name of the game with Clamblitz. The, 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 there's a reason people dislike this mode, mode for so long from playing solo queue. You definitely need to need to coordinate. Pass clams to each other to make power clams. Know when to push. Know when to give your your clam back to the back line and wait for it. Mm, that's really true, and especially if. Um, we are going to see that crack and cheese. You can't throw it back <laughs> to your heavy splatling deco, who's the one that's yeah. trying to get y'all in uh, with those power clams. I mean, they're just going to shed that power clam right off as soon as you yeah. give it over to them. Exactly, especially since the kraken can't just carry the power clam anymore like it used to. 
Yes, I am happy about that change. Uh, yeah. To be safe. <laughs> to say the least. Um, <laughs> but what other uh, specials and weapons do you think that we're going to uh, see here on Clan Blitz Museum? A Booyah Bomb wouldn't surprise me to see. Hmm. Yeah, yeah I... Yeah. Creating good cover for a push. Hmm. I'm also assuming that we're going to be seeing Zookas because... I mean, it's it's popping right now. Everyone everyone wants a Zuka. I mean, I've, we I are think, in the Zuka meta. We are. <laughs> I um I believe both teams here have been running cooler as well. At least sometimes. I mean, we saw the the Tri Nouveau on both teams uh, specifically. So I'm assuming we're definitely going to see a cooler as well. Um, but I would be interested if they keep the wiper. I mean, I think hammer is very fun on clams. I think it helps you get um, get your teammates in, especially the one with the power clam. And we do see Sploosh Man, again, not on the Sploosh, on the wiper. <laughs> we do see them stick with the wiper here. We see a zap, a shot, um, and the gal, <laughs> yep. tiny six gal uh, with Kraken. So one Kraken on under each Under two is, is bringing their Kraken to the fight. Nice. You guys are seeing the teams battling for control over mid here, and Crimson Ning getting that, getting that crucial First pick, pick again. Try to stagger their opponent. Undertow Darkfish already going two down, down early on. That's Flatter Shots getting very aggressive with the three down lead. And Crimson Link's members are rotating over to that platform where they're going to want to stay for a majority of the game if they want to keep this pressure up. The members of Crimson Ink are coordinating really well here. They're popping their specials. That Kraken is going to come out trying to get the members of Undertow Dartfish to feed into them. And they are kind of forced to because they are in their spawn. The Heavy here almost gets a pick. That would have been amazing oh. if they got that pick on Sulfi there on the Gal. But that allows the members of Crimson Ink uh, under the guise and distraction of that Kraken to score more points. I think they're going to end this push here most likely with that jump out at 38 remaining. And that is nothing to scoff at here. Yeah, that's a very strong first push. With my first push is generally I want to get below 60. If I get if I if I get more points than the opponent needs to score with two power clams, I do that as a win for a first push for sure. And they did a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. Crimson Ink here, as we've seen them uh, do so far in this set, layering on that pressure they're doing here. They're uh, going up onto this plat, but we do see Brenna over here. I see you, Brenna, on the end zap, kind of oh. coming in here for that flank, but they don't need to because Sploshman here is going to get three picks, eliminating everybody on their plat and that ramp. This is going to be Undertow Dartfish's time here to push up, get mid, and get some clams of their own for their own push. <laughs> Yeah, their party first and foremost would be get map control, keep their opponents out of mid, and build up <laughs> your clan of your, your clan economy. There's still about three minutes left. There's still about three minutes left in the game. P -p Plenty of time. You just have to calm down and, and, and not get too impulsive with your pushing here. Indeed, that hammer would have been amazing in helping uh -huh. them get in. But we do see Arvin here. I mean, on that gal is putting in. <laughs> <laughs> on the <this> sploosh, <laughs> so sorry Arvin, did not mean to diss you there. On that Neo sploosh here, putting in a lot of work, getting those picks, and stopping Undertow Dartfish's push in its tracks. Yeah, man. Just every time I see an Ultra Stamp die from the front like that, just, I get so sad. <laughs> I know. Uh, no buffs can save it. It's always gonna die. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, as, as, as we see Wolf from under to Darkfish, winning the battle of the Trizookas there, and getting and getting a pick uh, uh, on Crimson Ink. Crimson Ink does have their cracking ready though. So as it is coming out here to support, as they're pushing up to the enemy platform again. Yes, we see that Kraken go up there, enabling the Splatling to get up, up on that great, amazing play. I really, really like that. I mean, uh, ending your Kraken in a position that really helps you and your teammates score more clams is huge. We see Arbin coming here with that other power yeah. clam, scoring it all the way down to 17 mm -hmm. remaining. The shot as well is going to come up here to try and get some more clams, and they are successful getting it all the way down to 8 remaining. Yeah. If just a few more clams can come in from Crimson Ink, it will stop the match, but it looks like their push is going oh. to start. Oh, here, but as I say that, the sploosh does get a power clamp, but they cannot get there in time. Man, once again, the Kraken proving is that it's at its best serving as a distraction tool, tool forcing attention it, it on you, allowing the other team members to advance as they please and push on the objective while, 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 while the enemy players are just trying not to die. 
yes, I mean, those Kraken plays have been really crucial in getting uh, those pushes there. Oh, oh my gosh, Cygnus, that was one of the most insane Ooh. plays I've ever seen in my life. We saw the members <laughs> of Undertow oh, Darkfish oh. put up that wall, that 96 gal, they put up that wall on the spinner, enabling uh, sh the shot here, Wolf, to get a pick with that Zuka. Yep. That was one of the cleanest combos oh. I've ever seen in my life. Unfortunately, they cannot follow it up here in mid. They are going to go two down in an attempt of their push. We see Brennan here in mid fighting for their life with all that paint. But a surprise jump in. A jump. Oh, Arvin there is going to try to get a power claim, and they do get it in. And the members of Crimson Inc. are coming up to score some more points, but that wall is going to shut them out. A yeah, very strong super jump. And that Kraken is just... Zeroing in on the tower clan, get two picks once again. Coming in for more. Uh, the three Vs eventually going down, but 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 he got what done. What he set what he set out to accomplish to do. He's been spawning back. He could just b build up another one. Hold on, as time is ticking to an end in this game. And other two Darfish just have two pairs, but they're pushed all the way back. And that suicide score just breaks the barrier. Crimson Inc takes game three. Oh. That was crazy. I do see Undertow Dartfish here kind of fighting back and seeing the cracks, uh, whatever small cracks that there are in Crimson Ink's planning, though. <laughs> one, one member of Crimson Ink has their Splatfest tee on. I don't think that's <laughs> intentional. Make sure oh, to no. take this off, my friend. But, I mean, we see the crack in here again. Um, just... <laughs> Wreaking havoc in mid, yeah. pushing up into their face so that they have nowhere to back up and put the Kraken in an uncomfortable situation. Although when they end their Kraken, they're basically guaranteed to die there. They still get two people, enabling their team to keep the pressure up. So every one of these Krakens were really, really effective by Crimson Ink. Absolutely, yeah. And it's... And, and gotta give props to where you send it to Dorfish as well. Even though they did not come out on top in this game, they look much better at regrouping and attempting to get their own pushes together. Unfortunately, though, whenever they were starting to gain some momentum, there was the three Vs with the heavy spotling deco just 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 waiting there, just whether it's shooting down down two specials at, at the same time on your own plat or getting aggressive with those cracks and just stopping any momentum that the undertow Dorfish was building. Mm. And we saw a lot of um, coordination kind of come out from Undertow Dartfish, although it did not uh, succeed in any pushes here this game. Um, we are seeing them, like we've been saying, they're adjusting and they're doing a lot better here. So I'm interested to see how they fare on Splat Zones, Flounder Heights, which is going to be our fourth game here. If Crimson Inc. wins this, they do take the set. So... What kind of changes do you want to see Undertow Dartfish make mm. in this game that could be their last? Especially given that we're on Plunder Heights Splat Zones, that I want to see Undertow Dartfish have a much more aggressive beginning. If they could take control early on and establish control of the zones, their job is mainly watch out for flanks and try to keep the lockout, the lockout going. I think the beginning is going to be very important to this match. Very true. I myself struggle a lot on Flounder just because of how lockout heavy it gets. Yeah. I mean, if you are defending the zone, if you are in control of the zone, you are have the high ground. <laughs> so that makes it really hard uh, for your opponents to kind of come and try and push back in. I think you're absolutely right here that a strong opening is really going to help yeah. set the tone for Undertow Dartfish's success here. So hopefully going into this match, it's battle time, Cygnus. I want to see some good aggression, good picks in this opening. Yes, here he goes. Flat Zones, Flounder Heights. You love it? You hate it? It's here. Here we go. We're seeing the Xeon of Charger coming out from Crimson Ink this time. Interesting. I think... Hmm. I think that will fare them very well. I mean, uh, strikes are so strong on this map, specifically. Another interesting pick here is the Pro. I feel like we never see the Forge Pro, or Pros in general here, but they do have that Booyah Bomb, which as well is very strong here with all of those walls. An early pick here yeah. um, on both teams. It's going to be a 2v2 situation in mid, but Wolf here on the shot is the one is the last one left alive. Help is not on the way. They are zuka ing though. They do not care that help is not. Oh. They're out here trying to get some kills, although they 
come up a little bit short and Sulfi here is left alone here on the forge getting a pick on the dapples. Good news, dapple duelies is another weapon pick I, want, I wanted to highlight. It's something that you, you so rarely see. See, it, in theory, it should be a, a really strong support kit. Unfortunately, the, the, the main weapon is just so aggressive, you don't get... You don't get the support, but again, it's one of those off-the-board picks where if you know what you're doing with it, it could be very deadly, just getting beacons all over the place, type of coolers, and just getting aggressive running in your face. Running in your face, indeed, and I do think that's really going to help Crimson Ink here break back in. Uh, I, we see one of the members, the Flingza, on the side of Undertow Darkfish, sees that they're going to try and push in from that wall, but unfortunately falls victim to that Zuka. The rest of their teammates going down as well to those Ink Strikes, but the Forge Pro is still looking to get some kills here. I mean, we saw that they uh, killed the Dapples there in the corner, but it looks like they're... Uh, counting their blessings, but unfortunately they do get sniffed out and killed in the process. So, it is looking a little grim here right now for Undertow Darkfish. As I say that though, the zone may flip Ooh. over. Yeah, and Undertow Darkfish was able to take lead, they just have to retake it with... With it, this Inkjet and this Trizuka activated at the same time, that'll do it. Very good uh, aggression and special coordination coming from Undertow Darkfish as they're fighting to, to stay alive here. Yes, fight indeed. They are having a really, really Ooh. scrappy mid fight here. People are going down left and right here, Cygnus. I mean, it's a two down, so it's a 2v2 situation, sort of. We see a lot of jumps coming in, a lot of picks left and right. We see that wall come up trying to defend the members of Crimson Inc. on their respective zone. But Wolf here is uh, going to be unsuccessful in getting a pick, but the zone is going to flip in Undertow no. Darkfish's favor. Although here's Arvin flanking around with with those dabble duelies, manages to get a trade on the Flingzer roller. A a as two other players go down, creating another 2v2, but Crimson Ink has the special advantage with that having that Trizuka at the ready from their splatter shot. Kitsune is going to be killed by Ooh. a really nice shot by Kyo again on that uh, ZNF charger, which again, like we talked about, is a very interesting pick from them. We see Wolf over here trying to flank into their opponent's zones that they are currently in control of, but so much rop on them, snuff at flank. Yeah, and Crimson Inc. has retaken their lead. Their lead, and is still maintaining control, having uh, a zone and a half, their timer still going down, reach below the 30 point mark, mark and the and the inkjet from under to Darkfish going down as well. Yes, we see a bunch of specials pop from Undertow Dartfish. This is their last chance to try and get the zone here but they can flip a little bit easily. After all, it is a two zone map. We see that they're trying to fight here. That jet is gonna pop though, and is going to basically wipe, um, getting a three down situation for Undertow Dartfish, and that marks the end of the game. Yeah, a lot of chaos going on in mid, a, a lot of fights, but, but Crimson Inc managed to weather the storm coming from, from Undertow Dartfish. Playing a bit more patiently than they have in the past, getting some good timely flanks off and and, and taking the game to win this set for nothing. A very strong um, showing, I mean, from Crimson Ink here, Cygnus. They really, they they were very dominant, but that's not to undermine Undertow Dartfish this set as well. They did make a lot. Of adjustments I feel and although that didn't quite win them the set here I mean it will um, will still happily and I'm very happy to say this we will be seeing the play all seven so we're still gonna see undertow dartfish and crimson ink fight it out here Cygnus I'm hoping to see yeah. maybe you know the stress is off a little bit undertow dartfish can relax a little bit maybe being on stream got to them and maybe we can see some pushes here maybe we can see them take a game even though it doesn't count and crimson ink has officially won 4-0 yes yeah. These friendly games, after a set over, always so much fun. I mean, you see teams ex teams experimenting, teams sometimes getting a bit funny with their comps for, for the content, but also, so, so, so as you said, said so sometimes the, the, the pressure off, you see the team that fell behind in the main set getting some wins out from under their belt, belt being able to play a bit looser or now, not having all, all that stress of... 
uh, uh, watching just fall behind in the score. Just getting able to play, loose, have some fun with it. This is a game in the end, after all. We're here to have fun. Yeah, um, when I play CCA, I honestly find that my favorite uh, games are the ones that don't technically count. I feel like yeah. I have the most fun in those because there's not a lot of pressure and I find that I do the best in them because there is no pressure. <laughs> so I'm yeah. really I'm really hoping exactly. to see these two teams kind of relax. If we do see some meme comps, I wouldn't mind. But it would also be pretty cool if we see both of these teams kind of just play this uh, the rest of the set straight. Yeah, yeah either way is fine with me, like you said. <laughs> Yes, yes, indeed. Going in here, though, game five. Again, these are for funsies. <laughs> um, <laughs> tower control on Hagglefish Market. What do you think we're going to see here, Cygnus, come out of both teams? Hmm. I, I think, well, I, I know it's kind of obvious in the current state of Splatoon 3, but I'm definitely expecting some Trizookas. <laughs> yes, Sure. sure, yep. Yeah, overall, I think when, when the tower goes up into the tent on the defender's left side, that's going to be the main contested area to watch out for. I think here is my prediction. Indeed, indeed. And we do see a Trizuka um, on that usual shot player. We do see a Zuka as well on the Ooh, side of the heavy Is edit. that a double backline question mark happening on the side of Crimson Ink here? Yeah, you are seeing the heavy edit splatling coming out alongside the ZNF splat charger. Interesting. Interesting. Although the heavy edit could also function a bit more uh, as a midline charger as well. It does have noticeably less range than the other than than most other backline options. Hmm. Something else that I just noticed in this opening Cygnus is that the sploosh main on the side of Crimson Ink here, Arbin, as soon as the match starts, they go and uh, place down those beacons. And I think that that yeah. must be really crucial in Crimson Ink's ability to really come back into mid and come back hard and swiftly. I mean, we see them here, we see the yeah. heavy edit trying to contest mid. There's three members though of Undertow Dartfish and they do fall prey to that coordination, especially on, of Kitsune on the inkjet. Yeah, it, yeah the, 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 no matter how good you are to, to, to Taking on a 1v3 situation and rarely results in a positive outcome. W, good job, Spiders for Darkfish, getting all the members there focused on that one spot, spot just waiting for the opponent to come up to them there. You see, as we're seeing, the, the, the Cleansing Roller retreating back, back and cooler almost as kind of before he goes down to the splatter scope. Uh, a really, really nice pick there, but we do see a 2v2 situation for both teams here. I mean, the members of Crimson Inc. are going to respawn quicker, and it seems that Huffa here, in a really uh, smart play, I feel, tries to stick onto the tower. We see Arbin hop back on, and they do crack that first checkpoint. I think that's going to be so crucial to continuing this push, and as well as any other pushes they make this game. Yes, without a doubt, as we see, the that ball point splatling falling down to that Trizuka. The ship links which are also coming up to, to support to support Crimson Ink as they're still building in off that push. It's momentarily stopped by the Flings Roller, but more members of Crimson Ink just taking the tower, bringing it all the way up to checkpoint two now. Yeah, I mean, we see the three members of Crimson Ink all huddled up on there. They are besties on that tower getting that checkpoint. <laughs> uh, the strikes are going to come out trying to defend that checkpoint as well. We see that scope crack the checkpoint, and it's only taking down just one remaining, and they do KO it here. That was a really quick KO from Crimson Ink here. Yep. Yeah, again, like you pointed it, like you pointed it out earlier, Grace, I think those wood beacons play such a massive role in Crimson Ink's brand of aggressive play. play. Even whether they have their tactical cooler or not, it makes it a lot less punishing if they die as opposed to their uh, opponent. Never underestimate a good Squid Beacon user in this game. Very true. Um, I think it's also very interesting Again, using the sploosh, and we see we see that beacon action again, popping yeah. one into that right area of their spawn. 
to which they could just jump back from very easily. I mean, I assume we're going to see them jump into that there, if not onto the tower, because the members of Undertow Darkfish were so focused on the tower that they didn't even think to check their maps and look for that beacon. I mean, Crimson Ink is really good at um, overwhelming Undertow uh, Darkfish here, and we've seen that in this set a lot. It, yes, definitely. As we're going to Rainmaker on, on Crab Leg, uh, on Crab Leg Crab Capital for our final, uh, or rather, well, I can't talk right now for our second friendly match of the night. <laughs> listen, listen, Rainmaker <laughs> Crab Leg Capital. I think it's kind of tough, and it reminds me a little bit. Um, of flounder in the sense that it can be pretty lockout heavy once you get into a really mm -hmm. good and aggressive um position i mean once they kind of get onto those grates that little elbow area by that one pedestal towards the left it can be tough to break out of that Cygnus. I mean, and I think we've seen Crimson Ink be very, very good at those lockouts as well. I mean, we saw it on um, TC Inkplot 2, another, uh, uh, excuse me, Rainmaker Inkplot. Um, that is, can also be pretty lockout heavy. I mean, they have the potential to do it, but how do you think Undertow Dartfish is going to respond? I think... One of the keys on this map is once you have the, the Rainmaker, you can, take, you can take one checkpoint, but on this map in particular, don't be afraid to switch which route you're going for at any, at, at any given in moment. If you're trying for one checkpoint and the opponents are just, oh, they're, they're, they're locking down, you have the ample routes to, to get across and change plans. Go for the other checkpoint. Don't be too rigid in your planning here on this map. Yeah, I think that can really go for a lot of Rainmaker maps as well. Yeah. I mean... Um, being able to switch up at a moment's notice here, but Cygnus, if you did not notice, Sploosh Man is okay. on the Sploosh. It's like Christmas, Cygnus. I am ecstatic. We are going to see them go down, though, so that's my bad for uh, calling them out. <laughs> Commentator's Curse strikes, striking there as Undertow, oh, Darkfish, falling victim to a wipeout, and Crimson Ink takes the low checkpoint early on in this game. Yeah, Habib getting a checkpoint already this early bodes very, very well for uh, the next pushes here. We are going to hear that cooler pop, but I don't think the Rainmaker is going to go back and get that. Um, <laughs> we see them push up here <laughs> with the help of the Heavy Edit getting a trade, but that does mean that the Rainmaker is going to go down here. Although we see that Eva get a pretty quick pop, but the members of Undertow Darkfish are not going to let them push it quite yet. Yeah, Undertow Darkfish fish has lost a, a lot of uh, I've got early, but after that first wave, they've been playing good defense. I like that trade coming from the ball point. And here they got uh, they, here they get a recent combined with the triple just getting off, getting a kill, and dealing some damage to the Rainmaker Shield as the team, as this game goes into a two v two territory. Yeesh, two v twos. Uh, on Rainmaker are especially tough because somebody could try and make a cheeky play and grab their Rainmaker and you are at quite a disadvantage at trying to stop them here. Both teams yeah. are back up though with the uh, exception of that splash being down. The hammer is going to come in here and get a really nice double. A tr make that a triple sploosh man. You are definitely Whoa. the sploosh man. Oh, I, th I thought he got another splat there as well. Early on is he's heading up to those greats to, to regroup as the, the, the inkjet's coming out, and the Undertow Darkfish is making their presence known here. But the, but the wipeout happens yet again, taking a halt to their momentum. Yes, halting their momentum indeed. We see the members of Crimson Ink here pushing up, trying, really trying to dedicatedly uh, get up on that left area, but now that I say that, Ooh. they they fooled me as well as Undertow Darkfish. Wow. They were ill-equipped. Uh, to defend that checkpoint by the greats, and they scored all the way to one remaining. Undertow Dartfish is going to have to make a KO push <laughs> to win here. Yeah, we were talking about it earlier, but there was that, that flexibility in switching up your approaches, changing which route you're taking, just and, and that did a good job confusing Undertow Dartfish there. Well done by Crimson, by Crimson Inc. As they're pretty much content to play defense for the rest of the, uh, of the game now, pretty much. About two minutes left, and they, and they got all the way to one. Undertow Dorfish needs a knockout to win. 
Mm -hmm. But Cygnus, I mean, knowing Crimson Ink, they are not satisfied unless they KO. I suspect that they're going to keep pushing here. <laughs> As I say that, we do see the shot here from Crimson Ink get a double here, and somebody else cleans up that last push. Uh, I, I excuse me, that last pick there. I believe it was Arben. Arben going around for a flank. I think they're behind them right now. I don't know where Arben went. I am also fearful for my life. Yeah, there's almost nothing scarier in this game than just than seeing a flank and then losing track of it. <laughs> Indeed, indeed, Arbin there is going to be the one to clean up the members of Undertow Dartfish. That flank being such an amazing, I mean, uh, tool in really helping Crimson Ink possibly get the KO here. Undertow Dartfish is equipped this time to stop uh, a push here onto this right checkpoint, but there's nobody up to stop them, and Crimson Ink is going to get the KO. Yes. Very well done, by Crimson Ink. Unrelenting pressure, even at times it seemed Undertow Dartfish was going to be able to have a chance to, 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 to score some points. You might think Crimson Ink was going to sit back and, and play defense knowing they had a strong lead, but no, they just kept up the aggression. They wanted that knockout. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, knowing them, it makes sense. I mean, we yeah. saw that Arbin flank. I was feel for, fearful for my life as soon as I saw <laughs> them flank around the side from behind around their spawn. I mean, as soon as you find out that Spelucia's flanking, you've really got to focus on it or else. And they found out what happened or else. <laughs> yeah, just... If someone gets, gets, if someone gets behind your line, if you lose track of them, as you said, just... So, so, such a scary situation and to be in, especially, especially given, given the overall map between three, where the maps uh, are very straight, are very straight at all, making it a bit easier for flankers to, to be able to hide if they manage to pull it off. Yeah, I mean... I think Crimson Ink here has been doing a really, really good job at pulling off a lot of interesting plays, I feel. I mean, Cygnus, we've seen them flank. We've seen them do a lot of coordinated specials together. We've seen people uh, pick up where their teammates left off in like finishing off their kills. I mean, like we've been talking about, it's a lot of coordination and a lot of stuff that comes from playing with the same group of people for a, um, a large amount of time. Yeah, definitely. Having an experience together is a big boon to have in a game like a game like this. And also looking at Crimson Ink, they they're just the, the same four players in every match, out every match. They, they they practice well. They practice often. They're just they just had so much time time to be able to gel together so seamlessly. Yeah, I think something that um, really sets teams apart from other teams is when you can notice how quickly they're responding to what their fellow teammates are doing. And a lot of that comes from just knowing what your teammate is going to do without them even having to say anything, which comes from playing with them for forever. <laughs> yeah. Um, but going in here, Cygnus... We are going to be seeing Clam Blitz on Barnacle and Dime. We have seen uh, Clam Blitz already, which was uh, Clam's Museum. But how do you think that's going to compare to what we expect to see uh, this game? I, I don't think the lockouts will be necessarily as tight, tight because you don't have an area like that plat uh, a museum where you can hang out and suppress the... The enemy. I think uh, uh, I think Crimson Ink's gonna want to get a good foothold. You keep control of mid and just batter the opponent back from there. Rush in, get their clams and try to forbid, and then head back to that mid area. Indeed, indeed. We are going to see um, Sploosh Man unfortunately go back to the Wiper. I do like the Wiper pick, but your name is Sploosh Man, so I'm a little bit yeah. sad. But we are still going to see that Sploosh on the side of Crimson Ink, and do my eyes deceive me? That is another double backline comp, this time yeah. the E-Leader. Yeah, very interesting seeing an E-Leader. Honestly, given that it's Clamlets, I'm surprised that the Heavy Spotlight Deco didn't make its return here. 
Yeah, but I do like the idea of having a cooler, and I'm sure that is also what Crimson Ink is thinking as well. Yeah. Arbin here is going to cancel that uh, hammer there, get, pick, finding another pick as well. Arbin on the sploosh has been faring to be a, a huge thorn in Undertow Dartfish's side here. Getting another pick here, getting a quad! Arbin is popping yeah. off here, running yeah. back in here to mid to, to get some more clams and get that cooler. Yeah. Arbin also being the one who got the power clam in and, and to start that push as well. Yes, Arbin is popping off here on the Sploosh Neo, nonetheless. Um, we are going to see, unfortunately, that's going to be the end of the push for Crimson Ink here. Getting to 62 is not the favorite push, especially when you try to, um, yeah. when you have the, those penalty um, points. It can be really tough when you don't get as big of a, as big of a push as you w would have wanted. Yeah, I like the patience for under to Darkfish there. N n not panicking as the enemy team was going, so building their specials and using those to get them out and push back up into, into mid. However, here we see Orban getting multiple kills once again as he's leading the way with that killer whale as well. Yes, Arvin here is going to score. Um, we see the E-Leader here is going to have a lot of clams. Maybe they're going to try and score here as well, but they seem to be a little bit stuck under. But they do manage to get a few of their clams in, getting all the way down to 49 remaining. Muffle here is going to back out, trying to support their heavy... Uh, Excuse me, the heavy edit here, but they cannot get any more clams in. But knowing again, Crimson Ink, they are going to keep the pressure up. We see Arbin here is already about to have Ooh. another power clam. And that E leader got a key shot, got a key pick right there on the splatter shot. <laughs> or shot that just stops them from building that they're building that badly wanted Trizuka special oh, oh, and forces the power plant to move and eventually early dissolve as Crimson Ink scores again Indeed, it is just score after score here. Undertow Dartfish is having trouble finding their footing and stopping Crimson Ink from taking so much space, but the Zuka is going to help getting a pick on that E-Leader who was exerting a lot of pressure over them. This is Undertow Dartfish's chance to push up into mid, but it looks like there's a jump in from Arbin. I, I think that was with one, one of their beacons, <laughs> but the, um, the clam basket wasn't back down yet because they had just oh. put Cygnus, so that <laughs> jump in was unfortunately, I, I mean, it didn't amount to anything. Yeah, I love the play. I'm thinking they were a bit too fast with it. <laughs> Oh, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. But that is not going to put a damper on Crimson Ink's aggression whatsoever because doing that stalled out just a little bit. It put a little bit of fear into Undertow Dartfish's way of playing here. They are going to go two down. Sophie as well going to go down. Brenna not able to jump out with that power clam. And there's a lot of clams on the side of Crimson Ink here. They keep scoring. That shot still has some more, but they do die, unfortunately. But again, knowing Crimson Ink, <laughs> they are going to keep the aggression as they have for this entire game so far. It is about to be one minute remaining, Cygnus. And it is looking pretty tough for Undertow Darkfish. Yeah, Undertow Darkfish desperately just wants to get out from their controlled area and expand into mid. But, but that double black box presence of the heavy edit and the E-Leader are just pressing them and so, so much you're seeing that hesitation in, in in moving out further and that's hurting them a lot in the long run in this game just one more clam needed to ko and they do it cygnus crimson ink here is going to take all of the games in this friendly play all seven and as we uh said before win this set against undertow dartfish yeah just very very well played i love the the aggression coming from Crimson Inning from the moment the set started to the moment <laughs> and they were just r relentless just crushing their opponents so much using those beacons to get those jumps in and just not giving up control for any long periods of time keeping the momentum on their side ah uh. It is really tough to get out of those situations once they start. I mean, those back lines are just so, so well at holding their ground yeah. um, and just exerting so, so much pressure paired with the aggression of the sploosh and the shot. I mean, we saw so many amazing plays from Muffle and Arbin. It was really an uphill battle for Undertow Dartfish to break out of, and they just couldn't quite do it yet.
you, 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 yeah, from under two Duffers, from under two Darkfish's point of view, it's gotta be a frustrating set. You had g good moments. There were multiple times you were starting to get good pushes together, but but that just unfortunately wasn't able to to, to translate into any good momentum. Uh, um, as Crimson Ink just 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 kept getting up in their faces and and stopping them from getting anything more than the start of than the start of a, of a lot of pushes. Congratulations to Crimson Ink for winning this set convincingly 4-0 here against uh, Undertow Dartfish. Incredibly well played by both of these teams, though. Um, even though... Uh, Definitely. Yes, even though losing 0-4 can sting a little bit, there's always something to learn. So, don't lose any thunder quite yet, Undertow Dartfish. You know, there's going to be other opportunities yeah. for you. But Cygnus, our time is up. There's going to be another lovely, lovely match coming at you soon. Where can the people find you, Cygnus? Yep. Most of my presence is really in various Splatoon Discord servers. I'm around. I try to stay pretty active. Just, just, just chatting wherever, really. How about you, Grace? Well, um, you will see me many a times in. If you have heard of it, Inkling Performance Labs Weekly Tournament Swimmer Sync. I am in the help desk trying to not rip my face off and claw my <laughs> hair out. But more normally and more sanely, you can find me on Twitter at Tubnug. Do you have any socials you want to plug, Cygnus? Uh, I also have a Twitter, Cygnus1018. I'm not very active on it, though. I mainly lurk it and read stuff. That is very real, especially with the state of that app recently. Oh, but yeah. As we said, there's going to be another match coming at you here. It is going to be casted by the lovely Nito and Chai. It's going to be Div 4. So don't go anywhere. Stick around. But we're going to be signing off for right now. Yep. Thank you for watching, everyone. And in CCA Splatoon, we'll be right back with another exciting set.